Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the last of the days of all that we speak about, that is done throughout the centuries and been done and, and will continue to be done. I bless God for those of us that uh, that serve the Lord God. We, we come, this last opportunity that Israel had to come before the Lord God to repent, and we take this time. Of course, the great thing that you and I have as, as Christians, Christianity in itself, is the fact that we know that Yeshua came, that he became that sacrifice. So we don't have to and will not go into all the sacrificial things in which they talk about the whole. Now, it's also called the Day of Atonement, uh, the day of fat, or called the fast, I'm sorry. And it's important to understand that, that on this day that we shall all have, fa have fasted. Because again, it's what? It's a command from God. Now, in, in Acts, the 27th chapter, the ninth verse, and I want to read from there, it says that, now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them. Uh, there again, we, we, you know, as Christians, we've been told that Paul was not uh, involved or did nothing within the law itself. But the fact of it is, he did, because that is what this day, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is, is called is the day, is the fast. So uh, we fast upon that day, and, and that's the only time that that uh, terminology was used. So therefore, uh, in that itself, should have been enough, but of course it's not. Uh, that uh, that uh, that Paul kept the law because it, it was uh, that was the law that you fast this day. Now, interesting enough, there was many things that have taken place, and as I have said over and over again, the thing that everybody needs to realize is that everything that ever has happened, or everything that ever will happen to Israel, happened during one of the times of of these feasts. That's the reason I'm certain that the Lord God uh, instructs us that we will keep these feasts through our generations for a perpetual covenant unto him. So that therefore that we become attached to him through these feasts, and we understand that through these feasts, that bless God, that we are uh, his children, and the fact, and, and you can begin to look toward these things, all right, as, as knowing that, bless God, that, that what took place on this? Well, interesting enough that Yeshua will perform as our high priest on this day in the future. And, I, of course, I don't think that's any uh, great bit of information for anybody, but it's important for you to understand that he is the high priest. Uh, we, we, God forgave Israel for worshiping the golden calf on this date, that, that all of God's people will deny themselves now through fasting. Now, what the, the orthodoxy has done, they have actually talked about sexual abstinences, uh, not wearing leather shoes, focusing only on God, they, they will spend the day worshiping their creator. And, of course, there's not we should spend the day uh, worshiping our creator, keeping these things in thought of what the Lord God has done throughout the generations, especially, uh, bless God, that Yeshua came and Yeshua became, once and for all, the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb for all of mankind. But it, this is a, the only day that all will kneel before God as his name is pronounced, and, and uh, his name will be pronounced uh, ten times uh, on, this, uh, on this day, of, uh, or this celebration of Yom Kippur, or this uh, ending, uh, if you will, of the, of the Feast of uh, Bless God Trumpets. Now, on this day, Moses came down from Sinai for the third time. So he had been, he had been up on the mountain, he came down. Uh, bless God, Israel was returned from 70 years of captivity in Babylonia. In Babylon, I'm sorry, will have fasted on this day. That Yeshua was baptized by John the Baptist on this day. That the shofar is sounded on this day. Of course, we we've talked about that uh, when we talked about Rosh Hashanah. Uh, this day is a Sabbath of solemn rest. This day, Ezekiel was shown a temple like a city that is to be built in the future. And and these things have all happened, as I said, on these. These these particular feasts and in particular here Yom Kippur, the things that I that I have mentioned, the things that I have said, that that every time we we we, we realize the blessed God that, that what a special day this is, what a time that this is, the blessed God that the Lord God is 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 willing to to listen, 
you know, I'm always saying that, that his presence, and it's so important to, to realize that his presence is, is, is before us. And this, I think, makes all this become more vivid. Of course, again, uh, as I've said over and over again, the thing for you and I to do as Christians is to go back and, and begin to examine our lives. You know, we, we have the atonement that Christ came, that he gave uh, uh, through his blood for us. But at the same time, there's so many of us, this, this keeps going back into and back into and back into sin. And this is a great opportunity on Yom Kippur. To, to rid yourself of these sins that seem to so easily beset us, as Paul, the apostle, keep talking about. Now, I want to go into the book of Leviticus. And if you will turn with me in Leviticus 16, and we're going to look here at, at what the Lord God had to say about uh, Yom Kippur, all right, in the 16th chapter, and we'll start in uh, the second verse, and, and the Lord and the Lord uh, said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times unto the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come unto the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with the linen girdle, and with the linen mur uh, mitre, which is a hat, shall be uh, be attired. These are holy garments. But therefore sh shall he wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. He shall take of the con congregation of the children of Israel two kids of goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock, for the sin offering which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the, take two uh, goats and present them for the Lord uh, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement with him, and to let, let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock and the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord in his hands, full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Uh, it goes on to say, And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. So this was serious stuff. And and, uh, and I'm sure that Moses and Aaron understood how serious it all was. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood which is in finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his, and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy, and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for, uh, the, for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel, because of the transgressions of all their sins. And they shall, shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them that in the midst of, the, uh, of their uncleanliness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the conversation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord, and make an atonement for it, and shall take the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his fingers seven times, and cleanse it, and hallow it from, from the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place, and the tabernacle of the congregation, the altar, he shall... Bring, uh, bring the live goat, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their sins, and all their, and, and in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away in the 
hand of a fit man into the wilderness. In other words, he was going to take the sin of Israel, put it upon this live goat called the scapegoat, and all the sins of Israel would then be sent out into the wilderness. And that's the way that they were showing that they were to do that. And that was it, the example. But again, you know, for us, uh, bless God, we understand that. We don't have to go through all this and won't go through all this because, bless God, Christ has come. Mashiach has, has, has come to this earth, and he became all this for us. He took upon, took upon himself, bless God, and uh, through, the, through the cleansing of his precious blood, I took away our sins. And the goat shall, 22, the goat shall, shall bear upon them all the iniquities in the land not inhibited, and uh, inhabited, I'm sorry, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall put off the linen garments, and put on that which he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his face with water in the holy place, and put on his garments, and, sh and come forth, and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall burn upon the altar, and he that uh, and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his face in the water, and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought into the make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire of their skins, and their flesh, and their dung. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. And this shall be a statute forever, and that's important for you to understand, unto you as children of God, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your soul. What does that mean? That means we'll fast. Ye shall do no work at all. That's a Shabbat, a Sabbath whether it be a, a one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to make it, to cleanse you, that you will be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Well, again, the Lord Yeshua has come and done that for us. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and, and you shall afflict your souls there again uh, by a statute forever. In other words, that is the fast. And so that's what we, we will have done upon the day of Yom Kippur. And the priest whom you shall anoint, and whom shall consecrate to minister to the priest's office and his father's steed, shall make the atonement, and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And ye shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle, the congregation, and for the altar, and to make an atonement for the priests, and for all the people of the congregation. And this is an everlasting statute unto you, to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year, and and he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, again in 34, it'll be an everlasting uh, statute. In other words, and that's and that's what we're doing. And again, what we're doing is taking you back into this thing, and we're saying to you, okay, now look, well, you don't have to go through all this. And we're not going through this, all this, because the Lord Yeshua came and went through this for all of us. All right. But on the other hand, we're commanded to keep this this feast time. We're, we're commanded to keep this time of the blowing of the trumpets. Uh, bless God, the time of repentance. And it's a beautiful time. Brothers and sisters, it, it, it absolutely is a beautiful time for us to be able to do what? Is to go back and look at all this stuff. I mean, I, everybody has people you don't get along with. And bless God, get this, thing, you know, try, try to get things made right. Repent and be certain that these sins that you've committed. And, and I'll tell you, especially the unknown sins that we commit against the Holy Word of God. That these things are, it's a day that we can be sensitive unto our sin, even though Christ has come and he covers it. But, you know, at the same time, we have to pray in the name of Yeshua that our sins be taken, uh, you know, be taken away from us. And which we, you know, we will uh, get into that. Well, let's go to uh, Isaiah uh, 45. Isaiah 45. We're going to do 22 through 25 here. 20 through to 25. Look unto me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth. For I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, in, uh, say in the Lord, have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all seed of Israel be justified, and shall glory. Well, now, you know, every tongue shall bow. 
Every tongue shall, and, 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 and I'm sorry, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess him. Well, bless God, this is the only time uh, that during that time of Israel that, bless God, that on that on this day of Yom, uh, of Yom Kippur, that uh, every knee bowed. Every, every person bowed as the name of the Lord God is spoken uh, t- ten times. Now, you know, I, I know that we go through this stuff, and we get a lot of people saying a lot of things, and, of course, we... We've got this, you know, this thing going around about everybody. Somebody now has come up with the true name, the absolute, the pure name of God. Well, folks, you know, the only thing that I have said and and continue to say throughout my walk with the Lord is simply this. You know, I've watched the Lord God raise the dead using the name of, of Jesus. And, and, you know, and I've had people say, well, you know, he doesn't honor that. Well, I'm sorry, those people live today because of that name. Uh, to get hung up in, in whether we're using the right name or the wrong name is senseless. The Lord God is looking at what? The, the very intent of your heart. You know, I have always said, if there was somewhere in the world that somehow this magnificent God that we serve, that his holy son would have named, been named Joe, uh, bless God, that the, the, the dead would still be raised in the name of Joe. Because we honor him as what? The son of almighty God. Now, uh, we're not going to take that into the place. Well, don't you think that that's the Buddhist uh, has their, uh, just mistook that? No, I don't. And neither do I think with Islam. The blessings of, of the Lord God fell upon Isaac, not, not, not uh, bless God, upon Ishmael. And it's very, very important that, uh, that you and the rest of the world uh, begin to understand that. Let's go to Romans 14. Romans 14, 5 through 12. 5 through 12. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live... We live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. And, and you know, that that's so important to understand that. We belong to him. What difference does it really make? You're assigned a time. You're assigned a moment. As Solomon said, it's the flowers of the field. They're here one day, they're gone the next. And so is the life of mankind placed on this earth by the Lord God. Now, in the ninth verse. It says, for to this end Christ that both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord for the living and for the dead and living. And why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. Uh, so uh, t- then every one of us shall give account to himself to God. Or, or, or of himself, I'm sorry, to God. So therefore, brothers and sisters, now, no matter what, no matter how, you and I are going to give account unto the Lord God. And, and, and that's so important. And that's, again, a reason that we should be so conscious. I, I, over and over again, I say, without holiness, you, 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 can't, you can't know God. You can't see God. God can't use you. Bless God, you have to walk in holiness. And, and, and in order to do that, you've got to understand this precious, precious thing that's been given to us by Christ himself, which is called repentance. Now, in Philippians, the second chapter, and the first verse, Philippians, the uh, second chapter, uh, the verse 1, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other uh, esteem other better than themselves. Now, that's be hard for us in the church to do, but that's what we're told that we're supposed to do. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him 
and given him a name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because he said, there it is, it's all there, and you need to, you know, you need to work this whole thing out for yourself. You need to understand what he came uh, here to this earth for, why he was sent for this earth. He was sent to do, again, what the law couldn't do, and, and bless God, he did what? He now has become that place of a sacrificial lamb, and his blood was shed to the cleansing once and for all, for all of mankind. And praise God uh, for every bit of that and, and, and all that it does. Now, the, the, the ten days of all end with the immersion and, and God's uh, name recited ten times. Now, we don't have a mekvah or be able to take mekvah here. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but uh, bless God, if you're into that kind of a thing, you can immerse yourself in a bathtub or wherever it's at. And then the name is recited ten times. After that, we we will recite the name. We will bow and recite the name. Uh, bless God. But uh, the, the, again, that was the, the tradition that was used within that time. Now, Jesus, uh, Yeshua himself, uh, validated the immersion, and, and he did that in, in Luke 3, uh, uh, 21 and 22. So if you'll, if you'll turn there with me, uh, we're going to do some things down the line about, uh, about the, all this immersion, water immersion where it came from, and bless God, uh, more than that, uh, if it's necessary uh, today, to be done today, and I will tell you, yes, it is, and we will get into that, so don't jump the don't jump the call, as I'm always saying, just wait until we get to that point, and I'll teach it to you, then you'll understand the correctness within it. Now, in uh, Luke 3, 21 22, uh, it just uh, simply said, uh, uh, oh, I got them in the wrong chapter here, 21 22, um, That's not exactly, oh, I'm the wrong, sorry about that, sorry about that. Luke 3, of course we know what this is, or at least I would think you know about it. This is about when Christ came, showed up, and how it was the Baptist was there. Now, I'm in, now I found Luke 3, 20, 21, 22. Uh, and it says, now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus would also be baptized. And praying, the heaven was open, the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily uh, shape like a dove upon him, and the voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So so Christ himself, uh, bless God, uh, uh, was immersed, was baptized, all right? And so um, you know, baptism is uh, from that time of which uh, he had to be baptized because that immersion is all part of uh, the Jewish way of life, as a matter of fact. Well, let's go. Let's go on uh, back over into Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, and uh, we're going to look here for a moment. Leviticus 23, and we're going to be looking at 23 through through uh, 32. 23 through 32. Now it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying. In the seventh day, in the first day of the month, shall you have a, a Sabbath and a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Well, we know that that's Rosh Hashanah. Ye shall do no several work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made, in, made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul. There's where the fast is. Talking about Yom Kippur here. And, and offer an offering made before unto the Lord, and ye shall do no several work, or do no work in that same day. It is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, shall, he shall be cut off from among his people. Now, folks, again, this is the place where this thing becomes so serious. Now, you can't tell me that if the Lord God commanded this, that it would be throughout your generations, forever, a perpetual covenant, and that's what it is, that bless God that when he tells you that if you don't do this, if, if you don't afflict, in other words, if this is not the fast, if you don't fast upon this day, 
But there again, Christianity doesn't even keep the, uh, the, the this festival. So how would they even know? But here it says that, that that soul shall be cut off from among the people. So you can imagine, again, without going into a, into a whole lot of detail here, that bless God that if you're not into the covenant, then bless God it looks to me like you're absolutely, no, it doesn't look to me like it, you're absolutely on the outside looking in and just hoping to get lucky when you pray unto the Lord God. Twenty, uh, The 30th verse. And, and, and whatsoever soul, uh, it shall be that doeth any work in that same day, that same soul, or soul will be destroyed from among the people. So nobody was to break the Sabbath, were they? Uh, ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So in other words, it, it, it's not going to change, it's going to be forever. That's the way God placed it to be. You're, you're going to fast that day, and bless God, you're not going to do what? You're not going to do any work. 32 says, It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, it shall, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at, at even, from even un, until even, and ye shall celebrate your Sabbath. So it was given to the Lord by the Lord God that the instruction for us to do this. Now, it's like I said, there's a lot of tradition that gets put into these things, and as to whether or not you, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to follow on tradition. You've got to be real, real careful about getting yourself into a bless God things that bless God that are that are that don't mean anything at all. Uh, and we try to keep you out of what, and we call that legalisms. Okay, uh, let's 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 travel on. Let's go to Deuteronomy the thirtieth chapter, Deuteronomy thirty. Now this is interesting here. Uh, we're going to go one through ten here. It says, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse, uh, the, the, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee. Now it's talking about uh, us, talking about Ephraim, talking about Judah, when, when all of us were driven among the, the, the nations of the world. And, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. If any of thine, uh, of thine be driven out into the most parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he, uh, he fetch thee. Now, isn't that interesting? Again, right here uh, during this time of Yom Kippur, He's talking about the gathering, and this was this was tradition. These scriptures are are the th things that have been given, or at least these that were given in the in the Torah, are things of bless God that was given throughout the time of the keeping of this great festival. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thou fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And He will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which, which persecuted thee. And thou, shall return and, and thou shall return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all of his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in work of thy hand, and the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy land, for good, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law, and if thou turn to the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Isn't it something that the Lord God, even here, is talking about, bless God, that you can repent and you can return. And again, that's what that's what this is all about. Maybe some of us, bless God, need to repent because we haven't been keeping Sabbath right. Maybe, bless God, we you know we we have lightly esteemed these great festivals that the Lord God said that we would forever, forever and ever and ever, uh, bless God, uh, have throughout our generations that uh, and, and during that time. And and you know, again, I don't know. Uh, there, there are some people that bless God that just you know they're very adamant about the fact that. Well, I don't think we have to do all these things. You know, I just don't think uh, I, I, we've got Jesus, and we don't have to. We don't have to get involved in this. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something. I believe I would take a long, hard look at what it is that you have believed, and I believe that, bless God, that after taking that long, hard look of what you believe, I believe I would uh, believe something differently, because th this God that we serve 
Bless God, he knows exactly what it is that, that bless God, he requires of us. And, and he knows what it is. And all you and I have to do is what? Is, is look into the book and find out uh, what it is that God requires of us. Let's go to the book of Lamination. Now, the book of Laminations is stuck back in there that very few people ever get around to reading, I guess. But if you find Jeremiah, and then right after the book of Jeremiah, you'll find the book of Laminations. Now, we're going to look in the third chapter, and we're going to do 31 down through uh, the 50th verse. It says, For the Lord will not cast off forever. And, and boy, isn't that nice to know. But, the, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doeth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause the Lord approveth not. For it, it for it is, I'm sorry, who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Wherefore doth a living man come? Plain, a man for the punishment of his sin. Uh, let us search and, and, and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart and, and, and with our hands unto the God in the heaven. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered uh, with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast, hast not, uh, thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Thou hast made us of scorning and refuse in the midst of the people. All of our enemies have opened their mouth against us. Fear and snare has come upon us, desolation and destruction. Mine eye runneth down with a river of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mine eye trickle down and ceases not without any intermission till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. You see, uh, what what the writer here is saying that bless God that all this is choice all these things that we make bless God are choice but we have to understand that when we serve God we're under His protection we're under that we're under the shadow uh, of the wings of the Almighty God and when we don't bless God we are set out aside and bless God we are completely vulnerable well let's go to uh, uh, Exodus Exodus the twentieth chapter now. This is always read during this time, and, and of course it, it should be. Uh, this, uh, this was uh, brought down, written with the finger of God himself, and uh, so important that, bless God, that, that the Lord God would want us to go through it. So Exodus 20, which we know as what? As the Ten Commandments, starting in, uh, bless God, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any uh, uh, make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested, and the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the, of the trumpet and the mount smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but not but let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, 
that you sin not. Now, it's so important to understand that, bless God, that, that, that that's, exactly, uh, that's exactly the whole idea of this thing, is he is an awesome God. And what they saw that day as they stood there looking up on Mount Sinai, they, 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 they saw the smoke, they heard the thunder, the trumpet, they, they, and bless God, you know, sometimes I'm wondering, you know, it, it would have done us a great, a great service for all of us to have, uh, to have been able to have been there. But, you know, over and over again, I, I keep hearing the Lord say to me, you know, uh, when he spoke to Thomas, he says, Thomas, least you thrust your hands into the, into the, into my, into my hands, the holes that held his, you know, the, where his, the nails was driven to hold him up on the cross or thrust your hand into my side. He said, you won't believe, but he said, blessed are those that have seen not and yet believe. And, of course, we fall, obviously, into, into that great category. Now, let's go to 1 John, all the way back to the uh, book of 1 John. And there's, uh, there's a couple of things back here that, uh, that uh, we want to see. Now, obviously, when we get over into what we call the New Testament, what are we doing? We're, we're actually departing, if you will, from the, the traditional ways of, of the way that they do all this stuff uh, in uh, in, bless God, uh, the orthodoxy. Now, we're going to go to 1 John. We're going to go to the second uh, uh, chapter, 1 John, uh, second chapter, and we're going to do 16 uh, through uh, 18. Uh, 1 John, uh, second chapter, um, 16 through 18. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust therefore, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And, and, and isn't it something, bless God, that, that we can understand that? We, we, we can understand that abideth forevermore. Now, in the, first two, in the first two verses of that chapter, 1 John 2, it says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. So we're told not to sin. And if any man sin, but if you happen to, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, which is what? Our high priest. And he is, and he is a perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, you know, uh, uh, I think without a shadow of turning, bless God uh, to to know, to bless God to know that we have heard and we have believed and we understand that He is the perpetuation of, of the sins of all all this world is probably the greatest revelation that there has ever been. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Uh, the book of Hebrews, and we will, we will uh, uh, look here. We're going to start in Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2, since I get to Hebrews, we'll get that done. Hebrews 2, uh, 16 through 18. Hebrews 2, 16 through 18. Um, and it says here, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be made merciful and faithful high priest uh, in, in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Uh, for, he that, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. So in other words, He's able, that when we're tempted, he understands those temptations. And when we fall into that sin, now it's not, it's not like we just keep going back and sinning and saying, oh, you know, forgive me in the name of your holy son, Yeshua. Uh, it's not that. But, but he understands because he was tempted. In all ways that we're tempted, he's been tempted, yet the scripture tells us that he did not sin. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, Hebrews 10, and we'll do 15. Hebrews 10, 15. And it says here, 10, 15, and we're going to go down through uh, through 25. Okay, and it says, uh, Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he hath said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath 
consecrated for us through the veil, and that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the, an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. There again, it's talking about what? It's talking about, uh, uh, bless God, uh, uh, water purification. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is a faithful that promised. And let us, cons and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as a man or some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see that day approach. So, so we're again understanding that, bless God, that this, this thing which the Lord has made, this thing with Christ is part of the covenant. You know, again, I say over and over again that, that what we did, and it was, and we were, we were blinded from this. It, this isn't something that, bless God, that, uh, that we just were stupid about. God saw to it that this became a blinding, a blinding to us, and, and we became blinded to it. Uh, but Christ was 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 an extension or a continuation, if you will, of the very covenant of the Lord God, which if you study the material which the Lord God has given to me, you can readily see that, bless God, as it as, as goes down through all this, that, bless God, that, that, that there were all kind of different covenants, uh, all of which, bless God, are, uh, you know, uh, have have come. The, the, the difference in it all was when Jesus came, when Yeshua came, that he became once and for all. We didn't need any more of this sacrificing of these animals for, for the washing away of our sins on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Bless God, what we had at that point in time was we now had the sacrificial lamb, the Son of Almighty God himself. Now, the book of Revelation, in the first verse, I mean, sorry, first chapter, and we're going to look through verses um, 4 through 6 here. It says, uh, John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before the throne, and, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. There it is again. And hath made us kings and priests, unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So again, in the book of Revelation, we're, we're, it's spoken of, and we're told that. Now, let's go to the fifth uh, chapter of, of the book of Revelation, and we'll look in 7 through 10 here. It says, that He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, uh, having... Uh, every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and every and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. That, and, and you know, we shall reign on this earth. That, that reigning on this earth, bless God, was made possible again. Through what? Through the coming of our, of our Lord and, and Savior, Yeshua. Let's go to the book of Romans, and we're going to look in Romans, the third chapter, and we're going to read here, in starting in the 23rd verse. Now That's Romans 3, uh, 23, down through the end of the chapter 31. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption of that is in Christ Jesus, uh, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believed in, in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, what that's talking about is you can get to heaven without the law. All right? And, and, and we've, we have taught you some of that, and we'll teach you further into that. Ninth verse, he is the God of the Jews only. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which has justified the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the, the, the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law.
So uh, there you have it. And, and, and as the, at the, the whole thing of it is, is we bow our knee, uh, bow our knees before the Lord God this day. This, this holy day of Yom Kippur, the commandment came forth all those eons of, of, of generations ago. And as we cry out those ten times the name of Yahweh, uh, uh, over ten times uh, does it echo throughout the, the synagogues, throughout the meeting halls, uh, throughout the homes of which we preside these services in. So let it be in, in, in accordance to that of the law of Almighty God Yahweh himself. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you through the name of your Holy Son, Yeshua.